Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Um, all right, what happened with North Carolina tonight and uh, how did it end up going so poorly after the law or after the win over Duke on Saturday night? Um, you know, obviously they started off pretty bad. Clemson had some positive, you know, regression, I would say, as far as their shooting. They shot they didn't shoot it well when they were at Clemson. So naturally, this was going to happen. I, I just think they came out <laughs> really flat. They kind of came out like when you're in the NBA, when we were playing like a really good team, and, you know, they knew they were going to kind of get back in the game. If you didn't put them down before halftime, you were going to lose. That's how I felt North Carolina came out. They, they, they came out flat. They kind of let them do whatever they wanted. Clemson hit some shots because if you take away the first five minutes, North Carolina wins this game probably comfortably from a statistic standpoint, but they couldn't overcome it. Um, human nature crept in. You beat Duke. This is the first, you know, I mean, maybe a second, but this is like the first real NIL Duke top ranked win they've had. They probably had a little too much fun this weekend. And then that's what happens. Jeff. So are you saying that after you beat Duke, which I think happened you're so, you went over against Duke your freshman year, just to remind you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you beat them in the final season, the regular season finale, both your sophomore and your junior years. Are mm -hmm. you telling me that you went out, John Henson, and had some fun and hit the bars? Yeah, you know, but there's a there's an innate difference between my years and the years now. I used to try to go get a. I used to well, first of all, we used to get twenty dollar bottle of alcohol at the liquor store, right? And we would, you know. We would drink that at the dorms. Now, with the NIL, I mean, these kids are buying tables. I mean, they're popping bottles. It's just a whole different level of partying. I'm just going to be honest. So they probably had a good time, and they came out flat. I mean, it took them to a, a whole half to get kind of, you know, back on their feet, and Clemson just hit some timely shots. P.J. Hall kept shooting. I was hoping he would miss, and he, he made some timely threes and some timely baskets. And uh, this is kind of why I think we put – UNC a tier below the championship contenders because you look what UConn did today. They come out, they handle business, wire to wire win. On the Kempom rankings, Clemson and Butler aren't that big, aren't that far off in the, as far as their numbers say, you know, for Kempom. So that should tell you a little bit of a difference of what happened or like why UConn is who they are and North Carolina is where they're at. We'd like to welcome in everyone that was just watching Nevada and Utah State on Stadium. We are live. This is the Field of 68 After Dark. You can find us, Sirius XM Channel 84, every night, 11 o'clock, all the way through the entire night. If you're listening at 3 o'clock in the morning, you got somewhere to drive to, Channel 84, Field of 68 After Dark has got you covered. Um, guys, I want to read just a couple of things that came from uh, from Armando Baycott after the uh, after the game, the post game press conference. This is courtesy of Luke DeCock from um, Luke. I'm sorry, I can't remember where you uh, where you work off the top of my head. But he's he he covers North Carolina. He does a really good job with it. He said, according to Baycott, they had a bad practice Monday that was halted halfway through. I think that means that they probably got kicked out of practice. Is that the friendly way of saying that? Uh, they had a bad shoot around tuesday morning which was today and then they showed up late for warm-ups for the game on tuesday night and this is a quote we're a great team but we're not talented enough to turn it on and off whenever we want to jeff to me this is the first time that we've seen some of the i guess bad habits some of the issues that north carolina had last year right is this just a group that maybe doesn't hasn't quite figured out how to deal with the success yet or is this just you know, every once in a while, you're going to have a bad game, and sometimes you need that wake-up call. Yeah, they're just – they're good, but they're not great. There's no great teams. You know, UConn is the best of, of – that's out there right now. And you put UConn against John Henson's North Carolina team or, or, or that Anthony Davis Kentucky team, and, and they probably get hit by double figures. So there's just no great teams anymore. And, again, Carolina – had flipped this thing with its defense, right? That's what they had done mm -hmm. here. And I think they got away from that a little bit tonight. You know, Baycott was going to work on the offensive end, but what he was getting, he was giving up on the other end. And they were giving up the other end to P.J. Hall and Joe Girard. Uh, listen, give Clemson credit. I mean, think about it. They were 1-60 in 60 at the Dean Dome before tonight. This is just the second win 
in the history of this series uh, in Chapel Hill. So give them credit because this is a Clemson team that needed it. They were three and six. They had really started to kind of, and it really started with a game that I was at, at Clemson when they couldn't make a shot, like Henson said. And tonight they come out, they make shots, they get the confidence. But Carolina came all the way back, and that's where you give Clemson credit. They didn't let Carolina take control of the game when they got back into it, when the crowd got into it. And I thought P.J. Hall, though he missed a couple free throws again, which scares me because he's done this several times over the last month or so, but they were able to, to pull out the win. And I think this is going to be a win that ultimately probably gets Clemson in the NCAA tournament. Well, yeah, Clemson has now won at North Carolina and at Alabama. And there, uh, there was no doubt heading into tonight, John, whether or not Clemson was going to be a tournament team, at least according to our bracket show fielding the 68. Uh, we had them as an eight seed heading into tonight. But now I think you can make the argument that they have the best two wins Right at North Carolina and at Alabama, how many teams have two wins that are better than those two uh, true road wins? So I want to ask you this, John: what What is this Clemson team's ceiling? Okay, we know what they can be. They we know that they can win these big games. We've seen them have duds. You know, at home against Virginia is the one that kind of stands out. Um, they looked. Uh, just okay in a loss at home to Georgia Tech. That's not exactly the kind of loss that you want to take. Um, but we've seen how good they can be. Where do you stand on them? What's their ceiling? Is this a team that can get to the second weekend of the big dance? Definitely their ceiling is second week of the big dance. For me, you know, when I watched him play, P.J. Hall, I love him as a player, but he kind of frustrates me because he kind of – takes he takes a lot of shots and i think he takes a shot that the shots that the defense gives him sometimes that's not going to work this is why they're probably five and six you have to sometimes attack he took a mid-range jumper and the game was getting a little close and, and a little kind of sketchy which he should have probably attacked armando um and so that's i think offensively for them to be at their highest peak pj hall has to almost not take everything the defense has given you Maybe take better shots or attack a little more. Um, he shot a lot of threes tonight. He was 4 of 10, good percentage-wise. But there was a lot of threes that he kind of maybe could have passed up on. Um, he's a pretty good shooter. But as far as the team in general, um, they can definitely get to the second week, and they've beat two high-level teams at their place. So we see what they can be. It's just a matter of if shots are going to fall in and, and – you know, I, I don't think it's because of they can't shoot. I think it's about taking the right shots. Even Gerard, he took some threes. He made some, but like I would call it fool's gold. Tough Clemson, shot. Those shots are not gonna fall. Those though, yeah, right. those Clemson, those shots are not gonna fall every game, every week. They got fortunate tonight that they fell, and Carolina still almost beat them at the end of the game. Yeah, Goodman, you you kind of touched on this a little bit, but we see this a lot around this time of year, right? Where you have a team that is a little bit desperate, that really needs a win, uh, go on the road against a, a favorite opponent, a, a final four threat, a, a conference challenger, whatever it is, and just get this big run at the start of the game when they're all juiced up and the team that they're playing is kind of, you know, walking, going through the motions and, and not exactly as fired up as as the other team is, which it would in this case would be Clemson. And you see them blow that lead. Like, how often do we sit here and say, all right, it's time to jump on that live line. All right, Kansas is down by 12 at home. Hit that live line. Uh, I know I hit that live line for North Carolina quite a bit tonight, and it did not work all, all that well. I donated this a little bit more money to, uh, to bet MGM. But I think that was the most impressive part to me, Jeff, is that they took the punches. Every single time North Carolina threw a haymaker, Clemson just sat there and ate it. You know, and Harris Ingram got hit at the end of the game, and I don't know how effective he was after he got he got knocked down. But to me, I still think, like, okay, the silver lining in the last – this game, and, and obviously the Duke game, was Armando Baycott, right? Like, he's come back. He's got that kind of demanding, get me the ball. And I thought he's ceiling much better. And if you do, like, Cadeau's going to get you the ball. I mean, that's the one thing. You know – He's going to look to get you the ball in spots where you can score. Um, RJ hasn't been quite as dominant, but the guy that I still say, and we've been saying it all year, right? Who have we been saying all year? They're going to make shots. He's going to make shots eventually. Cormac Ryan. And he just hasn't been consistent making shots. Now, he's given them everything else they've needed, right? Leadership, a vocal presence, intangibles, toughness, all that. But at some point, I think Cormac Ryan's got to step up 
and be a more consistent threat from the perimeter to take some of the pre- – because if he can, then I think you put him as the third best team in the country. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.